Hi everybody. So uh, usually I make snowblower videos and usually I'm riding Yamahas, but to fit in with my friends, I picked up this Husqvarna. 2022 TE 250i, uh, the 300's obviously the same except the engine. And as everybody knows, the Husqvarna's come with brake tech brakes. Um, I'd heard a lot of things about being as good or not as good as the previous ones, but anyway, the bike comes with it, so what can you do? So right off the hop, I found that the rear and the front weren't really the same as my Yamaha. The rear had to go down and, and get the pedal pushed quite a lot to start acting. So luckily there's a master uh, adjustment, so I pushed that up and then the, the rear became really, really good, uh, responsive and bites well. The front, however, I've not been able to get away from the uh, take up that's in the lever, so I'll show it after. Basically how much the lever's gotta be pulled in before it starts acting on the brakes. And there's no air in these brake lines. I've bled them from the top and from the bottom many times. Um, with lots of fluid, there is no air in these brakes. I've, I've strained out the line to try and uh, make sure there's no air in there. I've, I've held the lever in the up position, pulled in. There's no air in the brakes. If you read online, lots of people are talking about it and everybody concludes, just get the Brembo, get the Brembo. Now for me, it's hard to know just looking at the fiche and looking at online chatter is what parts of the Brembo work with the brake tech? Like for example, can you just buy a brand new master cylinder and put it in with the existing brake lines, etc.? So what I did is I bought a Brembo setup off a 2020 uh, KTM uh, 150. It's got the motocross brake line, so it's shorter, whereas these lines here are longer because they have the light. As well, the Husqvarna runs the brake line through a sleeve, and I don't want to take the brake line out of that sleeve because I'd have to take the whole speedometer and everything apart. I don't want to do this. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is put a new Brembo Master up top and keep the line in situ and keep the brake tech slave down below. I'll try that out and retest the brake performance to see what kind of lever take up I've got there. Of course, I gotta bleed the system. And depending on success of that, I might finish the job by putting the Brembo down below. All right, everybody loves brake fluid here. We've got the Brembo uh, Master Cylinder upside down here in the vise. I'm gonna take the banjo bolt off. I intend to reuse these washers and I'll suffer through a leak if it happens. All right, gonna leave that there. So here I've got the, uh, the Brembo Master in hand. All right guys, just to show here what kind of brake uh, performance I'm getting. If I spin the wheel, I'll start actuating the lever and we'll see when the wheel starts to stop. So after about an inch, the wheel doesn't start to stop at all. If we go beyond an inch to maybe an inch and three quarter, we're getting some, I can hear the pads. And if I go hard, I'll get it maybe an inch and a half. So I'd say to an inch, there's almost nothing. An inch and a half, we're stopping. And then maybe the full pull is like say two inches is what I'm seeing here. So out here, we're at four inches and up here we're at two. So we have two inches of total travel. Now, I did mention that I had shimmed back here and I took the shims out, but unfortunately uh, I couldn't show the other demonstration because my uh, mic was off. We're gonna go ahead and get this removed now to get the Brembo installed. All right guys, to add insult to injury here, the uh, map switch on the Husqvarna is uh, integral to the front brake handlebar mounting. So in order to not spend another 80 bucks or whatever it is on the KTM one, I'm gonna try to remove this and get it remounted using some 3D printing or something for which I can make the files available. So for now, I'm gonna get the banjo uh, bolt disconnected from down below. I'll put the line up in the air and then I'll get ready to put the new master in there. So I'm gonna have to move the uh, throttle assembly a little bit so I can get to the bolt. I've gone and marked it. So I'm gonna get try to move this so I can get to the banjo bolt. I'm gonna move that over. Now I can get to the banjo bolt. So I'm going to re-secure the brake lever. Now I've got a 13 millimeter for this banjo bolt. Now again, dot four brake fluid. Make sure you got something to spill up the mess. Otherwise it'll eat your plastics as we all know that that's what happens, which is awesome. So again, we've got two washers, copper washers, got paper towel and all the lint that it can generate for us. Awesome for our brakes. I'm gonna finish removing this. All right guys, here we've got both banjo bolts. Um, we've got the one from the brake tech We've got the one from the Brembo. So the Brake Tech one is a little bit longer. The Brembo one has a concave end, whereas the other one's flat. Uh, one of them's 12 millimeters, which is the Brembo. One of them's 13, which is the Brake Tech. So I would say these are not interchangeable, which kind of sucks. And you'd think they maybe would be. Let's see if the thread type, the threads are the same. One of them's got more thread than the other, which is the uh, Brake Tech bolt, which is longer. 
All right, guys, I just put the uh, Brake Tech banjo bolt in here. Uh, when it bottoms out, there's eight millimeters left. That's without the bottom washer, whereas the banjo bolt is one centimeter thick. So to me, you should be able to use this banjo bolt or from the Brake Tech to the Brembo, but that's at your own risk. So here we are fitting that Brembo banjo bolt onto the hose. I'm gonna put that in there temporarily. So now, instead of having a hinge, we have two bolts. Unfortunately, we've gone from the premium Husqvarna setup to the chintzy KTM version. It's too bad. Pay a premium price only to pay it again to go back. So we're gonna temporarily secure this so that we can work on the uh, banjo bolt. The banjo bolt seems even positioned worse than previously, which is awesome. I'm not gonna be able to get a wrench in there or anything. So that's really good. Really grinds my gears. Uh, I might have to take this e-start button out to get to it. Here we go off with the e-start button. Just gonna push this over so that we can get to the banjo bolt. There we go. So once again, we're going to secure this so that we have torquing ability. The Yamaha is 30 Newton meters, but I'm gonna do the KTM here at 22 because it just feels more delicate. There you go. 22 Newton meters feels tight enough. Anyway, what I'm gonna do here is use a T10 um, Torx bit and get this micro switch out of the map switch. Otherwise I'll have to go and reach the harness behind the light, which I don't feel like doing. So now we've got the, um, the brake tech removed. I'm gonna try and smash this pin out so I can get this to my friend. And there's an arrow on this, which I think is the direction to push the pin in. And you can see it's flared there. So what I'm gonna do is, there we go. Round two, fight. There we go. So I'm gonna run this over to my favorite 3D printing shop and we'll see what they can do. So what I'm gonna do now is get a helper up at the master cylinder to pull oil out as the oil level rises while I push oil in from the bottom here. Um, so I'm gonna fill a syringe with about 100 milliliters of dot four. I'm gonna put it on the bleed screw, open the bleed screw, start pushing that oil up, and then my helper is gonna pull the oil out of the master. I'm gonna put the camera up at the master so you can see the bubbles come out. If need be, I'll have to take this bleed screw out and Teflon it so that air is not going in via that method, but I should be good with uh, positive pressure down here. So let's uh, start here. So I put the new master on, I back bled it from the bottom. Um, you have to have the lever not tie up to the bar to do this. Um, and after all, the, the brake feel is pretty much like before. It doesn't do anything in the first inch. When it gets to about an inch and a quarter of brake lever take up, then the wheel starts to stop. Uh, this master feels a bit more aggressive than the other one. So you don't need to go beyond much beyond uh, an inch and a quarter and the wheel locks up pretty good. This is all on the stand, of course. So I'm gonna proceed now to doing the uh, slave uh, cylinder with the caliper, even though I preferred not to, and I thought this would have resolved it. I'm gonna go for the, for the other component and see if we can find a resolution to this. All right, guys, so I got the Brembo uh, caliper put on now. The reservoir up here is empty, it emptied out through the hose. So now that that's torqued on the bottom, I'll just back bleed it and fill the reservoir back up until all the air is gone. All right, guys, so I'm finished with the uh, Brake Tech to Brembo conversion. So just to recap everything, you can use the existing TE brake lines and uh, the ends are still compatible with the caliper and the master. By changing the master cylinder alone, so the, the top portion here, uh, the performance of the brakes did not change. But when I changed the caliper down below, things changed immediately. I uh, back bled these from the bottom up. And as soon as I finished back bleeding them with the caliper down below, um, brake performance was quite good. I'm gonna show it here. Um, and I'm gonna show some photos of the 3D printed uh, map switch bracket that I've got made. And I'm gonna post the file uh, down in the description below. And if you wanna buy any of these things, we can probably sell them for whatever it costs to make, a couple bucks each plus shipping, put an envelope or something. So yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, let's show the performance of the brakes. And that'll be it, thanks. All right, so you can't see it here, but I've got the brake lever measured to the four inch mark. I'm gonna give the wheel a good spin. And when I start pushing in, we've got brake action within the first five eighths of an inch. 
So five eighths of an inch. Now let me push that in one inch. So by pushing that break in by one inch, we've got a quick stop. Let's see now if we just start kind of holding the break a bit. So, so on a quarter inch, we don't get too much, but within a half an inch, we start getting some breaking straight off the, you know, so half an inch we're breaking, quarter inch, nothing. So we've shaved about an inch off the take up of this break. So big success.